Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line. Today's topic is reviewing and redlining a bad drawing. So we posted this drawing on social media and we asked our viewers to weigh in on all the mistakes on this drawing. And now we're going to go through the drawing and identify all of the errors and why they're considered wrong. So here's the drawing that we posted. And again, we invited everybody to weigh in on what uh, they saw was incorrect or wrong on this drawing. And one of the comments was, what is technically an error? Uh, now, the errors can be considered a lot of things, whether they're just bad decisions or outright illegal uses of tolerances or outright illegal tolerancing methods. Um, so for the sake of this exercise, we're just going to focus on things that are absolutely not allowed by the standard or break the rules outlined in the standard. We can argue here um, about the amount of tolerance that we've given some of these features or why we chose some features as datum features or the datum reference frame that we set up or the material we chose. Those are all really decisions that designers have to make and defend. And there are good decisions, bad decisions, and some decisions that lay somewhere in between those two. And so we're not really going to split hairs over, you know, why we did things as long as they are legal and applicable to the ASME standard. That's our goal. And that kind of brings up the first point here. The first point being this drawing is to ASME Y14.5-2009. And even though this drawing was created in 2025, we can certainly uh, and, and very defendably so call out the 2009 standard or the 1994 standard and be perfectly legal. Uh, as far as the ASME goes, you can operate on any single revision for eternity. You just have to call out that year on the drawing itself. If you don't call out a year on the drawing, it does default to the most recent standard, which in this case would be the 2018 standard. So the fact that we put 2009 in here just says that, hey, cumulatively for this drawing, or maybe as a company, we've um, adopted the 2009 standard and have not yet been able to adopt the 2018 or don't want to adopt the 2018 for various reasons. Some symbols have been removed, some symbols have been added, interpretations have been defined or adjusted, maybe not to our liking, um, or just collectively the company has not been able to decipher or train all the employees to all of the changes that may or may not have affected their drawings. And generally, we, we like to say that there's not massive amount of changes. They didn't reinvent GD&T from 2009 to 2018. They did do a great job of redefining some things or adding clarity to some things. Some tools have been removed, like in the case of concentricity and symmetry. Some tools have been added, like uh, dynamic profile modifiers, things like that that need to be considered. But uh, at the end of the day, we don't have to uh, draw the drawing to the most recent revision of the standard. There are very practical reasons as to why you might not do that. Now, going with the theme of staying in the title block, we also know that this is drawn in third angle projection, but we show the symbol down here as first angle projection. So this little symbol here is the plug. And what we see here is this plug is for first angle. So if we look at the drawing here though, it's definitely in third angle drawing view. So what we would see is if we stood here and we looked this direction, uh, we would see this. So what we see from the right side is what we draw on the right side. Uh, the opposite is true. Uh, if we stand on the right side, we would see the, the left side. That would be first angle. So this drawing is in third angle as far as the drawing views go. But the symbol down here is saying, hey, this is in first angle. So those are conflicting. I would either change the drawing views or change the symbol to match, right? So that's the mistake number one is, is the angle projection. Um, somebody also mentioned that the zones are off, uh, both in quantity of zones based on the size of the drawing. There should only be four or five or six, um, as well as it counts down from six down to one from left to right. Uh, there was one comment that said it should be one to six from left to right. And the preference to the standard, the ASME standard, is six to one to left, uh, starting at the highest number. And again, starting with the, the uh, from, call it the highest letter uh, and starting down, basically starting with A at the bottom and going up. And there are definitely um, good practices based on the size of the drawing that you should have and how many zones you should create. But there's no hard, fast rules that there has to be four or six or ten. Um, there are definitely recommendations, though, if you're interested in that within the ASME standard itself. Now, again, sticking to the title block, we see here that we have an all surfaces unless otherwise specified. So we have an unspecified tolerance block, and we have all surfaces saying here that profile of a surface of 30 thousandths 
relative to A, B, and C is applied unless otherwise specified. Now, that may or may not seem like it directly conflicts with this UOS all services callout. And what you'll notice on this drawing is actually, uh, we'll talk about this here in a second, datum C is, is not appropriately defined. And in fact, it's not used anywhere, anywhere across this entire drawing. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And in that instance, this ABC doesn't make sense. And so sometimes designers don't have the ability to change the title block. There might be a default tolerance on there that is locked down for you know company reasons or proprietary reasons or whatever it is. But there is an overriding unless otherwise specified all surfaces up here. And notes take precedence over any tolerances in the title block because this note is in the field of view. So it is saying these notes are a global note and they apply to everything in this view. That would be like saying this surface here has profile of surface of 30 thousands relative to A and B. And that is directly specifying the control here. Whereas if there's something that is unspecified altogether, has nothing identifying any control over it, now we do apply that. But this will get to it first. So the notes will always be applied to the field of view. Uh, and then whatever is left over is what the title block controls. So by applying this to everything, this is taking precedence over that note. And that's just how global notes work. They apply to anything in the field of view. And then what's left over is in the title block that gets applied to everything. So technically in this case, nothing's left over. This is left useless down here. We don't ever get to utilize that. So again, the unless otherwise specified contradiction that a lot of you noted uh, in the field of view, takes this takes precedence. And that's, that's a, a good reasoning. Again, the next thing we'll talk about here is datum feature C. Now, datum symbol, uh, datum, datum reference symbol for datum feature C is identified right here. This is outright illegal. We cannot put the datum feature symbol on the center line for this feature because there's a couple of features. There's a handful of features technically that could create that center line. And by simply applying it to the center line, we don't know if that center line is for the ID or this small OD or maybe for this large OD. Each one of those features has a center line at that location, technically, right? Uh, but in the real world, they're gonna deviate in position a little bit. So they'll all have different axes locations. And by simply identifying this as datum feature C, we don't know which one of those three is establishing datum axis C. And so you can't just theoretically identify an axis as C, you have to identify what that axis is derived from. That's how we measure the part. So this is absolutely outright illegal. We cannot do this. Um, and then not to mention this perpendicularity on that datum axis that was trying to be datum feature C. Um, let's assume that is trying to control the perpendicularity of the ID. Well, that's already being locked down perpendicular to A to 5,000 based on this position callout. And this one here is being perpendicular to A as well to 5,000. And so we can see also the orientation of the cylinder is locked down to A as well. And none of those are going to allow us to control the perpendicularity any tighter with the caveat of this one. Um, but again, it's just best practice to attach the perpendicularity directly to the size dimension if it's not already being controlled by position. So again, this just kind of becomes um, irrelevant, redundant, call it what you want. It's not an appropriate uh, call out here. So I would get rid of the datum feature symbol as well as this perpendicularity call out and rely on this call out, this call out, and this call out to control the perpendicularity of those three diameters relative to datum A. You'll also know on top of that, datum feature C is not useful. Uh, datum feature C is not necessary when we consider datum feature B. Datum feature B is the pattern of five holes. So this pattern of five holes can not only control location this way and this way, but it also can clock things. So that pattern of five holes controls the three degrees of freedom that datum feature A wasn't controlling. Datum feature A could control this translation, this rotation, and a rotation in and out of the page. So between A and B, those two datum features control all six degrees of freedom. So even if we did legally identify maybe this ID as datum feature C, we wouldn't need it. We've already locked it down. C will never end up offering anything for anybody else. And so we don't def we definitely do not need datum feature C uh, defined on this drawing. A and B will cover all six degrees of freedom. Now, there was an argument that datum feature B should have been the ID. 
Um, and I would say that is not necessarily an error or considered wrong. Um, datum feature B was selected in this situation because that pattern of holes sets the location of this part in the final assembly. It is the functional feature that controls the location of these features relative to the rest of the assembly. And that helps us out in the case of tolerance stacks and tolerance analyses. Uh, and so that's why datum feature B was chosen. Now we could have identified some other feature as datum feature B. Um, and that might help us out in the case of making inspections a bit easier if we have to do this manually or other considerations if those features were more functionally setting the location of this part in the final assembly, like in the case of a, best, a press fit scenario. If that's the case, then by all means we could, but there's nothing illegal about the application of datum feature B here. Some other things that we noted uh, across the board, these two should be basic dimensions. So we should have a 72 uh, degree basic dimension here and a 1.875 diameter basic dimension here. And we can't put tolerances on those. Those are basic dimensions because they're identifying the true position that is already controlled by this tolerance. So by using plus minus dimensions here, we are over tolerancing it. Position has already got that locked down. We just need to utilize those basic dimensions to identify their true position and where they should be. Next, we see the simultaneous requirement here. Um, and what simultaneous requirements is, is something we cover in our advanced course. And it's applied by default to any control that has the same datums in the same order with the same modifiers. So we see here, these are the same datums in the same order with the same modifiers. That means we have by default a simultaneous requirement on these features. And we don't need to explicitly say that, so this note becomes redundant and useless. We could, however, put a separate requirement if we want them interpreted separately. Um, again, not necessary though. So we would get rid of that simultaneous requirements on this drawing, that is redundant. This one is quite subtle, but as you notice here, we are missing a diameter symbol. So the control here is for an axis, the axis of that feature, and our tolerance zone needs to be diametric in order to control that axis. So small, small issue there. Uh, one that I commonly do on a lot of my drawings is just forgetting to put that diameter symbol there. Uh, very common mistake. Generally, if you see a position on a cylinder without a diameter, I'm guessing it's a typo. And then the last one that we saw getting pointed out was that these two dimensions, this eighth inch and the quarter inch dimension should be plus or minus and not basic. Um, while the eighth inch dimension could be technically plus or minus and so could the 0.25, those would be just size dimensions. They would not utilize datum A as the origin of that measurement uh, because size dimensions don't get to use datums. It'd be strictly a size dimension, and that might be illegal, but a best practice is to use profile to locate surfaces to datums. Uh, and that is exactly what we're doing here. We're having a basic dimension to identify where the surface should be. And then we rely on our UOS all surfaces profile of 30 thou to say relative to A and B, this surface has a zone of plus or minus 15 or a total zone of 30. So it'd be like saying 0.125 plus or minus 15 thousandths with A being our origin. Um, it's just a much more direct way to inspect these things, to tolerance these things, and it makes doing tolerance calculations much easier when everything is to the same datum reference frame. So that just kind of makes it a good practice. Um, would it be outright illegal if I put a plus minus dimension on these 1.25 and 2.50? Absolutely not. Um, but be careful in the 2018 standard, if I had a dimension between these two surfaces, that would be absolutely illegal. That is not a feature of size. Um, there's a lot of ambiguity that comes from those. We've done a couple of videos on there uh, on our, web, our YouTube channel that I'll make sure to attach below. So uh, keep that in mind. That is illegal now in 2018 and just really bad practice even before that. So, so that is, in summary, all of the errors on this drawing that we intentionally put on this drawing to see if everybody could capture them. And generally, most everybody did. Uh, there's a couple small things, some small nuances like first angle, third angle, or the missing diameter symbol that was missed. Um, and a lot of maybe um, false assumptions on some of the methods we took here. But again, legally to the standard, uh, those are all the errors that we can identify. And any of the design decisions like tolerance values or why we chose certain symbols over other different symbols uh, can be up for debate, absolutely. Uh, designers have a handful of solutions to accomplish their end goal, and it should be centered around that functional intent. So thanks for participating, and uh, hopefully you learned something. Have a great day.
Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles